Good morning, guys. Week nine, day two. We always shift the laundry out every morning. Today, I'm going to talk about metabolic smacking again. Sorry, Lynn? I'm taking out my, my business. She's taking out her business. <laughs> no, her business stuff always clogs up the bathroom and clogs up the hangers. I can never get to my shirts. <laughs> Okay, as far as our schedule goes, um, by hours, the guys are on track. They did shift to the front columns yesterday after Cirillo welded up the steel onto it. So now they can get ready for those pours. Um, but again, he's got to put another piece of steel on the front um, center pillar. We had to work through the roof again. For some reason, people getting involved want to give their opinion as to how this roof is running. I said, who have we told is doing the roof? The roofer, leave him alone. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> uh, they always want to get involved in these different pitch and you know, one, one slope going this way and then lower it a little bit and the other one goes this way. They always want to get into those types of roofs and we're just not interested in that stuff, guys. We're trying our best to do a minimalist house um, as best we can, okay? And of course, you know, size, you know, I show a lot of people 60 square meters for a house and it depends on who you're talking to. Whoa, that's big. I hear that a lot. 60 square meters. What do you got? Three bedrooms and two? No, no. <laughs> but that's just the reality of a Western brain minimalist versus a Filipino. Um, and reminder that, you know, we've got two good sized decks to live outside on. So in many ways, this is you know, a hundred square meters or a thousand square feet uh, of living. So, plus a garage that, that is detached. Let's get to this day. First up, fasting. Metabolic smacking. So first off, what I wanna cover is ketosis and why you need metabolic smacking. I wanna get into my fat uh, fasting for my breaks and a little bit of ancient history as to why this all happens. So if we dive into ketosis, we understand why people say oh, that's just the latest fad diet. It fails. It doesn't fail. It's just that they all went and bought cookbooks and failed to understand how metabolism works. Your metabolism will start high and then it will ramp down because your body wants to store fat. It wants to store fat not only for the energy if all of a sudden you have no food, but it wants to store it for things like vitamin D and other things that are stored in the fat. So in the winter, when we would have been eating a lot of fish and fatty meats and that type of thing, and virtually no carbohydrate at all, then we would have got vitamin D as an example from the fat of the food that we were eating and vitamin D from our body. And because we would drop our fat stores very, very slowly through a winter because we're eating a high fat diet, then we are releasing all of that vitamin and, and such that's been stored in our fat that we need for the winter. So that's why ketosis works, but you have to understand met met metabolism at the same time. So what have I been doing for my metabolism? Because there's a lot of weightlifting uh, types of programs out there about smacking your metabolism, but they're all based on garbage food with very, very low nutritional value. And there's a reason why they have to fortify this food, guys, because it is dead food. It's not live food. So fruit. When I left Canada, I was doing and did a couple of videos on it. And I didn't get the hit that I expected because the glucose load or the fructose load was equivalent to what I might have eaten with a couple of donuts and a pizza, right? So what was the error there? Well, there was a lot of fiber in there and it slowed down the release into the body. The sugar did arrive, but I was using a lot of it as energy and I never got as big a metabolic smack. As soon as we got here, more mangoes, more water and watermelon high sweet boom goes into your body really fast boom your body takes a hit you get a little bit of a rush off of it when you haven't had fruit in a long time and then you ride that down as you start ketosis again now as i mentioned the 
the way I'm going to break the fast here is with eggs. I want that all important B vitamin group and the B12 especially off the eggs that I can get. And, and we're getting native chicken here, which means that they're not pumped full of hormones and all of that type of thing. The rooster is doing the hormone injection, as it were. <laughs> so for me, that's all important because I'm being very, very physical right now. And I'm not toned up, obviously. And so to be doing a full fast and being that physical, uh, it's just not smart for me anyway. You could do other things like fat fasting and, and that sort of thing to get your energy. But I, d I haven't found that as easy on the stomach, let's put it that way. The fat wants to just rush right through you. And so you get these urges every once in a while. So yeah, uh, the Philippines has kind of opened up a new window as far as doing these metabolic smacks uh, to help with the weight loss. I have lost. I Even looking at my videos, my face looks thinner. Um, I do feel thinner. Uh, I'm still carrying it all around the stomach, but guys, the ladies carry it on the back side and we carry it on the front side. And so I do feel off my back, I've lost weight and such. So it's working. And boy, I'll tell you, when you added the watermelon to that smack, <laughs> boy, did I get a <laughs> did I get a, a rush of energy. Holy cats, I was almost jittery. Okay, so that's what we're doing in the Philippines for metabolic smacking. Okay, a reminder of what Danchi's fence looks like. You see it's got uh, horizontals on there. To me, that's just a ladder. We are doing verticals so that the guys can't climb it. Uh, we've got some concrete in here last night. We also dropped, sorry for the quick camera movements here. We also dropped some of that heavy concrete into there um, and anchored to it. So there we go. So. The, the, the spacing on this is very short. That's for being able to put in a door. And then of course they got to work out the spacing going down and that, that uh, meter base there, we're going to undo the weather head and everything and then mount it on the outside later. The guys are ready now to set that center form. Um, and they do 90% of the form guys, but it's not fully tacked down because they need to weld onto it first. Uh, this one here, the guys have already welded on, so they've tweaked it up and now they're ready to pour. As a matter of fact, the guys are mixing a batch now for that far piece. If you can see a little piece of red angle iron hanging down there, that has got nothing to do with the roof. Nothing. It looks good. I'm glad to see it getting to where it is. You know, I'm so used to seeing this stuff uh, when it comes to a commercial space that <laughs> it looks like it's going to be a commercial stalls. <laughs> oh well, it'll get there once the finishing gets on it. Roofer showed up before we even started our day. <laughs> I didn't even have the door open yet. That's fine with us. You want to show up at five when the sun's coming up? I'm okay with that too. These guys are going to get hot. You'll notice that each piece of uh, rebar that's sticking up about uh, 20 centimeters, uh, or yeah, somewhere in there, um, they're welding that to that that uh, red bar that's going down. That's that's got the rust inhibitor on it. And then as soon as they've done that, they go back and they start um, uh, painting it up with the rust inhibitor again. We want, we've made it very clear and they did a very good job last year on the garage. Two hits with the paint. Definitely not designed for snow loading. <laughs> okay, so what we did was we talked to him. He's worked out the distance off of the end of the post for the overhang. And the way that works out is that it will be about a third of the way down that post, sorry, tie beam, it'll be about a third of the way down that. That way I can put my soffit up at a slight angle because yes, water does go uphill. Seen it way too many times, but we want to make sure that there's no chance that for any leak or whatever that the soffit will, will pool any water or anything like that and allow water to go into the house. So the guys did all of the, uh, level checking and I am happy with that. That gives us our peak. 
Let's go see what it looks like from the garage side and compare its slope to this one. Now I'm about 50 meters from the from the garage and that slope looks pretty good. If I come down it's a little bit off but that's okay because the garage ended up just a little bit unsquare. <laughs> Which boy, oh boy, when they put the roof on and we had the property line markers on here, did that ever show up? I think the error came in that they measured off of the septic tank instead of going back to the original source to make sure everything was square. <laughs> Not a big deal. Oh, the garden. What a shame. <laughs> It'll be four weeks before we even see juvenile leaves on there. And Lynn still won't let me eat them. <laughs> Those Moringa murdering goats left a fertilizer deposit. Fortunately, they didn't get to Lynn's Alabati. Uh, but we do see there is some Moringa on this one and it's got a shoot on it. And this one also has a shoot. So we haven't totally lost these Moringa. We'll have to cut the new greenery off. And Yeah, each one of them looks like they're they're still intact. Let's finish our way up front. Hi to self. Okay, so the guys are getting the next post up there. Uh, they just restruck the line a minute ago, and uh, they'll probably pour that in a little while. And all the digging is well underway. We decided to go a little bit heavier on the tie beam on the bottom, guys, because. The soil is so saturated with water. This post and this post are going to be 10 inch so that we get a little bit more oomph for the metal gate that's going to go on there. Lynn's gone into Bogo City to send the money for our biggest order yet. Whew, 150,000 pesos. Oh, <laughs> that's the AC block and the adhesive, guys. Uh, that includes the shipping, which turned into a bit of a, hmm, do you want us to buy your product or don't you want us to buy your product? All of a sudden, they decided to use a cartridge company to get that product to, from Cebu to us. And they wanted to put it on the biggest truck that they could find that had a high ab to take it off. Problem is a whole bunch of other people's product is going to be on this uh, truck, which is, uh, that's all fine and dandy. I'm okay with that. But you better be able to drive onto our property and put our block on our property. Oh, sir, we want to deliver it to the highway and then, you know, you guys could carry it in from there. Blah, blah, blah. Blah. Hey, listen, that's okay. We'll cancel it. Don't worry about that. There's another company. We'll go talk to them. <laughs> anyway, a little back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And finally got that resolved. Boo! Anyway, speaking of truck, now you know why I don't care about this vehicle, guys. It has to serve a purpose. And yes, we could have bought a truck and all of that sort of thing. And we would have beat that thing to death. And we would have had no security. Let's get this pushed up front for the guys because they are feverishly pouring concrete. They're digging up the driveway. <laughs> now, got to put a good tie beam in here because we are going to be running the driveway concrete all the way up to this tie beam. Uh, what we do beyond that, meh, that might be just to see how, you know, water comes off the road and everything. We'll determine that later. Right now, Get the fence up. Sometimes life throws you curveballs. It did on the fence. Let's have a look. Okay, this is what happened when we left. When this postie was being put in for our power, there's no rebar in there. And they only went down about <clears throat> maybe two feet at the most. Maybe. Good luck on that. Anyway. So we are going to put in a very small posty here. We're going to put an extra tall tie beam in. Um, and then we are going to weld our post to this 
um, to this posty. So that will give us the rigidity that uh, we think we might need because the way our line takes off, it's on a corner. And all it wants to do is fall in one of two directions. There's no way I can throw an anchor back the other way. So there we go. So our symmetry <laughs> for this engineer uh, just went off, but hey, it's okay. By the time we put the plants and stuff out here, who will ever know? Time to take the truck, I mean the car, I mean the SUV, I mean the construction vehicle down to the other end. Walk with me into the house. Oh, See, hey. you'll, you'll walk <laughs> this way, you go down the sidewalk, and then you up the ramp that isn't here yet. <laughs> the invisible on, ramp. Onto the deck. What's our first step? Oh. Oh goodness, Second step, we have to go through the door, which means we have to <laughs> duck through the cocoa lumber and over and over. Is this and now we're suddenly walked into the wall where the kitchen is. <laughs> yeah. And Lynn doesn't like being in frames, so she just keeps walking ahead. There we go. And if we're at the front, yeah. we're looking out at the Daggett. Oh, the and this is our view. Later, Gators.